CJ here at DC Black Film Festival, and I am here with Stacy Erne. So, East of the River, um, very interesting movie, very candid shot of teenagers in like school teenagers. It wasn't, you know, so that was pretty much. I'm guessing the whole aspect of it was get the candid natures of teenagers kind of just roaming around the area, essentially, right? Yeah, um, in some way, it was like a Ferris Bueller story yeah. of a day in the life of kids, except these kids um, did not choose to be out of school necessarily in the same way. Um, and coming of age stories always interest me because I find teenagers fascinating. So, you know, how they deal with events, um, taking the video medium really helps bring adults like back into that feeling of like they are rational human beings acting and they're just trying <laughs> to get stuff done. Yeah, um, so, because I know the lead character, she rolls into school and is like, oh, yeah, you, you, you're suspended. And she's like, what? What, what? what happened? So was that always a thing of, because, I mean, even I was just like, what she get suspended for? Was that always just like, no, we're just going to keep it. She just got suspended and that's it. So that's a case that I've had many times. Really? Um, when kids don't know why they're suspended or they're being expelled and we're preparing for a hearing and yeah. we have to guess what they did wrong. Yeah. So it's like going through your head. So for me, it was really important because of all the advocacy I work with suspensions. It doesn't matter what she did because she doesn't know what she did. Oh, okay. And that's a due process violation yeah. that in my world, most people don't care about. It's like she's going to get a letter. Her parents might get a letter in the mail, yeah. but it means so much to a kid. So when she rolls off and she's heated and she transfers that heat yeah. and energy to the other kids around her, that's what we're doing every day when we're not welcoming these kids into school. Yeah, because I mean, like you said, yeah, it definitely does have that Ferris Bueller feel to it and stuff, and I like their adventures just kind of just walking around. Now, one of the characters, she in particular, she doesn't go to school. She's been pretty much out on the streets and stuff. Was that also offering a different perspective of some kids that actually do kind of just jump into that life? Absolutely. I wanted to show as a contrast the fact that another young person who grew up in the same neighborhood as the other female character made a different choice. And as she explains at the end, she has money. Um, she provided for the folks who had not no money to eat, but they're the ones who, or at least um, Tiana, wanted to go to school. So it was a rational choice, and I wanted her to look up and see kind of this alternative role model. Um, and to be like, wow, there's pros and cons of things and she's just processing what she's learning so yeah. they took different roads but they can connect and understand each other and i want people to think like what teenagers do may look wild yeah. Yeah. but it makes sense because yeah. no, yeah. i mean what i like about it is like most movies would like demonize the girl that option not to go to school and you know make the other girl who got suspended like oh she's the hero and i like that you provided a bit of nuance and stuff not too many people would do that which is a shame because you need that nuance to show there's different perspectives of it, like you said you were going for. And you have the third friend who clearly, you know, he's gay and such. And I like that. It's just like there's no, like, focus on him being gay. It's just like, no, that's just who he is. So was that kind of the conscious thing to do for him as well? Um, I definitely envisioned a gender nonconforming character in some way when I crafted Malik. Um, when Malachi walked into the room, he was... When he auditioned, I immediately knew he had to be the character. He just brought this brilliance um, of himself. He was, funny. he was definitely funny. I, like, I actually did enjoy him. I was like, okay, I like him. He's, he's providing a different dynamic for this little group of three. You can't write in his fabulousness. It just exudes off of him. Um, so I wanted to show that in D.C., we have a culture where in terms of like queerness, the young people are talking about it in D.C. differently. Um, and I feel like in a more evolved way. And I wanted to feature that because DC does not get the kind of attention New York City, um, Los Angeles, or San Francisco does in terms of actual youth culture. And the fact that we have kids in green mohawks um, walking around in platform shoes on, in, in public areas strutting their stuff is unique to DC. Um, and I wanted to feature that. So they, they were all just amazing characters. Um, the duo on the Metro scene, it was a brother and sister and a friend, um, and they're a dance group. And we just saw so much talent like that reach out to us on Instagram where we find it. And it was just to feature as much of that as possible in 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, because that's also the good thing, too. Because, I mean, how did y'all go about 
finding these areas to actually film. I mean, obviously, you know, you have to get the metro train and stuff, obviously, but y'all were at the actual Anacostia skating little ring and stuff. So that was that conscious, like, we got to get that shot of them skating, or was that just kind of like, maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't use it? No, the roller rink we had a permit and we had to re and we had to open the roller rink on a day it wasn't open. Oh, okay. So that one actually took a lot of work and the metro shot's the only stolen shot in the oh, film. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a skeleton crew. Yeah. Um, so, so in terms of the location, um, there was intention in just featuring iconic places in DC for local people. Yeah. I wanted local people to be like, this is a film about DC. Um, I've been here about ten years. I wasn't born in D.C., but I've never been anywhere longer, so I consider D.C. my home. Yeah. And I wanted to show the D.C. that most of us know, yeah. um, which is not the monuments and which is not traditional locations. Chili yeah, and Ben's Chili Bowl offered um, for us to film for free. There yeah. were so many people just supportive of what we were doing. Same with Martha's Outfitters um, in Anacostia. Yeah. They allowed us to come in and film for free. And so there was a lot of support in the community. They were like, what are you doing bringing these fancy cameras here? Everyone was stopping to ask us what we were doing. And I really loved that we brought that and that there was like an interest there. Like, so you're not filming cars on fire and yeah. like yeah. I mean, trash can, on the street? I mean, we were talking before we started the interview like about how like most people when they hear DC, they just like you said, the monuments mm -hmm. and things like that, but they don't know like, oh, there's neighborhoods in DC. Like, you, like there are neighborhoods if you actually drive in DC wherever you're at, southeast, northwest, northeast, whatever, it's more to DC than just that. And I think a lot of folks, I think this film does kind of show people like, oh, they actually filmed in this neighborhood. They filmed there. I didn't know Anacostia had a, had a, had a roller rink. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I thought that was actually pretty good that you guys kind of shown a light on that and stuff. So do you feel this is kind of an informative thing to get people like, oh, we can actually go past just the tourist traps and maybe look at other places? For me, one of my goals is to have a divided city come together. Um, in education, where I work, uh, we have been racially segregated since before Brown versus Board, and we are literally integrating. And I think that what that will take is us meeting each other as neighbors and coming together as a city, um, all the quadrants and all of that. So yeah, absolutely, the roller rink park and Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens, and there's so many fabulous things um, east of the river. Yeah. So I want the com the commuting, but most importantly, like the conversations. Oh, gotcha. um, because I think like anyone who meets the characters that are in the film will love them and will will see their humanity. And they need to be talking to the people in DC who are here to change national policy. They need to be in the same room together yeah. in order to like bring it home and like actually integrate. So that's my ultimate hope yeah. is that this is a conversation starter. And I'd love to do screenings that put that at the forefront um, so that I can connect more people. Yeah, because like I said, you had these characters, they felt like actual teenagers. And I like that. Because like I said, some movies, you don't buy into like, yeah, a teenager and stuff. You're not doing teenager stuff. And it's like, oh, these are teenagers. These, they're, they're acting just like how I was as a teenager and stuff. And I actually did enjoy that key aspect. I think that is a key aspect of that film to kind of get you engrossed in a little bit. So, Malachi yeah. was 14 when we yeah. filmed it. So I mean, he's absolutely. Like a 14 year old. I mean, that's, that, that works. Right? Yeah. Now, I so. love teenagers. I, I love teenage spirit. Um, it's the age I identify with yeah. the most in terms of my own coming up and formation and my personality. So I just love being able to feature that. Cool. Well, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. And um, yeah, definitely check out East of the River whenever if it gets broad distribution. Definitely check it out. It's worth it. You'll like it. You'll enjoy it. So. Thanks, Chris. Oh, no problem. Take it easy. <laughs> Peace out.